Good morning and thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to tell you a little bit about the food bank story. Um, hopefully the click is working. Um, it's a nice start. Okay. Food plays an enormous role in our lives. It's, it's the reason families get together. Um, it's the centre point for most of the social interactions that we have. And quite frankly, if it wasn't for food, none of my friends would have anything to Instagram about. Um, but, the, but you may be surprised, or in this room you may not be surprised to know, that the Food Bank Hunger Report, um, insert subtle plug for our report, which will be available in a couple of days, uh, unfortunately, it won't be launched by Jamie Oliver on the 7.30 report, but it's a good report anyway. Suggests that 516,000 people every month rely on food support in Australia. Without that support, many people will not know where their next meal is coming from. But this is not just a homeless issue. When you speak to the general public, people generally think of hunger and food insecurity as being a third world issue or something that's, uh, that only exists in those, in those areas of homelessness. Um, having the opportunity early in my role with Food Bank to travel around and speak to many of the agencies, um, rather than those people uh, being out on the street, they're more likely to live on your street. Um, many of the examples that I've been given um, are examples like um, a grandmother who's raising um, a grandchild um, on a pension, and we all know how much food uh, growing boys can plough through. Um, it may also be a young family who have incurred um, an unexpected expense. It may be a medical expense, it may be a car broken down, and they're faced with that difficult decision as to whether to fulfil their financial obligations or to put food on the table. Sadly, we know that 30% of those affected are children. And when we look at short-term um, food support, we know that that number rises to almost 50%. We also know from our research that one in seven children are going to school without a nutritious breakfast. Back. Okay, this is going well. <laughs> so this is where Food Bank comes in. So what is Food Bank? I'm glad you asked. Um, food Bank is Australia's largest food relief organisation. Essentially, we work with the food industry to provide surplus and donated food to the welfare sector. Um, I'd now like to share with you a short video about Food Bank. Hopefully, I've prepared a dance in the meantime while Dave up in the, in the box is getting that ready. Food is an important part of our lives. We eat every day without thinking twice about it. But this is not a luxury that everyone has. Hunger in Australia is a hidden crisis that affects over 2 million people who at some point in the year don't know where their next meal is coming from. As Australia's largest hunger relief organisation, Food Bank supplies 80% of the food volume that is distributed to welfare agencies by food rescue organisations. Our food goes to over 2,500 charities and 832 schools. We provide on average 109,000 meals per day, almost enough to feed the entire population of Darwin. Last year alone, Food Bank provided nearly 40 million meals to Australians. That's the equivalent weight of 14 Boeing 747s. But Food Bank does more than just redistribute rescued food. A decline in surplus food has meant we've needed to establish innovative programs to obtain food in other ways. We've gone back to the farm to source meat, grains, milk, fruit and vegetables. This produce is then either distributed directly to charities or to our manufacturing partners that create key staples such as pasta, cereals, sauces and sausages. Unfortunately, the demand still outweighs the amount of food available. Despite our best efforts, 60,000 people are turned away from charities every month due to a shortage of food. This is why we need your help. Join the fight to end hunger. Visit foodbank.org.au to find... Food Bank uh, works with Australia's food manufacturers, distributors and retailers. And retailers. Um, 
who we found to be incredibly generous in, in their donations to Food Bank. I think that the, uh, the food industry uh, generally gets, uh, gets beaten up a lot by, by all of the, um, the, 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 the poor practices that they, they're perceived to undertake um, or the, the negative impacts that they have on society. But in our experience with the food industry, they've been incredibly generous and, and quite often their contributions are far in excess um, of what is surplus food. Uh, in fact, the, the total donations of food um, to Food Bank last year at retail value topped $200 million. So we work with 2,500 charities, some of which are in the room today, to distribute that food. We like to think of ourselves as the roadies who, who sit behind those rock stars that are the welfare agencies doing that important work at the cold face. Um, the, the welfare agencies that we support really are right across the scale. They can be from a small soup kitchen who uses food bank uh, food to, to create prepared food, um, right through those larger national organisations um, who provide free or discounted groceries to those in need. Over the past 10 years, Food Bank has distributed enough food to make 200 million meals. As you can see by the, by the graph there, there has been a steady increase in the amount of food that's been donated across that time. Last year alone, Food Bank distributed 29 million kilos of food, which is roughly 40 million meals. So Food Bank distributes, um, uh, Food Bank represents um, about 80% of all of the food that's um, distributed by uh, food relief organisations. And that's not some sort of humble brag about how we're gr uh, greater in scale than another organisation. It's really to demonstrate where our value proposition is. So Food Bank's real focus is to utilise our logistics capacity um, to provide an enormous volume of food um, on a daily basis. So the focus of that food is generally ambient product because it has a longer shelf life and can be distributed through our distribution centres. Um, and we also have a fresh and short coated product, but that tends to be um, that bulk supply which comes directly from the farm, which I'll speak about um, in a moment. Um, as an organisation, we have distribution centres in every state. Um, there are about 105 full-time staff in the organisation. Uh, and countless volunteers who make that distribution possible on a daily basis. One of the debates that we have quite regularly in the organisation is what is the responsibility um, of a larger scale food relief organisation like Food Bank around food education? Um, you've seen through some other presentations and certainly in Catherine's presentation before this one, there are some great programs around teaching people the importance of using fresh produce the, import, the importance of cooking and teaching the basis of nutrition. Um, as an organisation, you know, we debate that quite regularly and you'll hear from Rex later today about a program that uh, we run with the Western Australian State Government um, which is around school breakfast programs and food nutrition. Um, but essentially we see um, the most effective way for us to influence uh, the food that people are eating is to make more key staples and fresh produce available. Now, what do we mean when we talk about um, key staples? That tends to be a fairly broad term. Um, we do a survey um, of the food relief organisations, um, sorry, of the, of the welfare agencies, and they give us their top 10 most wanted foods uh, each year. And these make up what we call key staples. We've seen an increase over the past five years from delivering 30% of key staple products to 78% key staples. So people still have access to um, chocolate and, and, and chips and, and all of those things that, uh, that we quite often see as, as being discretionary food or, or, or being food that we don't want people to consume. Um, but the importance is giving people a broad range of food and giving them the dignity of choice when they're accessing um, food relief services. Um, fresh produce also makes up a significant part of our volume. Um, and as I said, most of that um, fresh fruit comes directly from the farms or, or comes from the large uh, distribution organisations. Last year we distributed 9 million kilos of fresh fruit and vegetables. But an increase in efficiency um, throughout the food industry has meant uh, a decline in surplus product. Put quite frankly, there's probably people in this room who are working around the clock to put us out of business. Um, we'll come and find you later, but in the meantime, 
Um, we need to find innovative ways to, to bridge that gap between supply and demand. The first of those that I touched on before is going back to the farms. And we've made a real effort to go back uh, and speak to the growers, the farmers, the producers um, to make donations at the farm delivered directly to Food Bank. Um, it's the only way that we can distribute considerable quality um, and quantity of, uh, of fresh fruit and vegetables, uh, meats and grains. Um, one of the programs that we're incredibly proud of has been the grain program. So a year ago, we went to the grain industry and talked about the importance of grain in those key staple products. Um, the industry responded incredibly well um, and assisted in putting together the grain program, um, which sees growers having the ability to donate product at the silo. This is going well. I've turned it off. Let's watch a video, I'll come back to that. <laughs> It makes me feel very proud being involved with this. It starts from the paddock and goes through to the local silo, wherever that may be and whichever organisation that may be with. Then it goes from there and it's transported through to the processing plants. If a grower donates to the program, Grain Corp will uh, waive all charges associated with that parcel of grain. Once the grain has been donated through the supply chain, it will then go to the food processors. Now what they'll be doing is taking that grain and donating their facilities, whether it be a milling plant or whatever, to actually then produce the product, which will then ultimately be donated to Food Bank to then give to the consumers. We'll take the grain in and we'll convert that into flour and pass that on to manufacturers. We have a really generous food industry in Australia. Be it farmers, manufacturers, retailers, product comes into our warehouse um, and then we distribute that product to 2,500 welfare agencies around Australia. Something as small as a tonne could uh, make over a thousand loaves of bread and as everybody knows, a loaf of bread can feed a family for a lunch. Uh, that, that's a thousand meals. You, you might have four or five thousand growers all with one or half a tonne parcels if you, if you do some sums on that, it adds up to be a thousand, two thousand tonnes. What we're aiming as, as, a, as a grains industry is to contribute three thousand tonnes annually. Uh, now if we do that, that can make up to 22 million meals depending on what the product is, whether it be a cereal, bread or a pasta product. Uh, if you know yourself that that's going to somebody in need, you, you feel a little bit warmer inside about it as well. 293 tonnes of grain. Uh, in the first year of that program, that's a phenomenal result. Um, but, the, but the grain industry being, being so generous and, and having embraced this um, program in such a big way has set themselves a target of, of uh, 3,000 tonnes per year uh, within the first three years. Um, that product is stockpiled um, and goes towards the manufacture of pasta, cereals and bread. Which brings me to um, the next slide, which is the Key Staples program. So we've talked about the, the raw materials, that, uh, that fresh produce, the grain, the dairy, um, that comes from the farms. So um, in order to maintain that steady supply of those key staples, which are so important, we needed to find a way to, to ensure that we weren't just relying on surplus. So the Key Staples program looks at um, using those donated uh, raw materials and then uh, surplus and donated production capacity in our manufacturing and food partners uh, to produce those key staple products. One of those programs which we're incredibly proud of is our relationship with Rinaldi. So Rinaldi, as you may know, are a pasta manufacturer. So the process basically has gone that we get grain donated through the grain program, we work with a milling partner to turn that into flour, and then Rinaldi turn that into pasta. We get some donated packaging, some donated transport um, from, uh, from our various partners, and we're able to uh, deliver uh, free pasta uh, through the welfare agencies. Um, to date, Rinaldi have manufactured 20 million kilos of pasta as a result of this program.
The next area we're seeing as being a really vital part of, of volume going forward is cause related marketing. Now this will be nothing new to many of you in the room, um, but we've really just, um, you know, just started piloting significant CRM programs with enormous uh, results. Uh, the first of which was the Goodman Fielder program, uh, which saw Goodman Fielder donating one loaf of bread for every loaf of bread sold. Um, they ran this uh, campaign for a six week period and it resulted in three million loaves of bread being donated to Food Bank, um, which is almost a year's supply um, of bread for, for our demand. Another program which you may have seen on supermarket shelves, which we're very proud of, has been the Kellogg's Breakfast for Better Days program. So Kellogg's came to us and they had a, a global initiative which was seeking to uh, distribute cereal to school breakfast programs. We work with Kellogg's to, um, to um, sort of redefine the scope of that, uh, of that campaign because we know that the need uh, for cereal in the Australian market certainly stretches outside of school breakfast programs. So um, we work with Kellogg's um, and they put together a campaign that had a target of six million serves of cereal. Um, the response to the campaign was so strong that we ended up having eight million serves of cereal donated through the campaign period. To give some context, that equates to roughly 248 tonnes of cereal, uh, which is a significant contribution to food insecurity. From Kellogg's perspective, they saw an uptick in sales, which is always really important. Um, they saw an increase in brand equity in the target demographics they were looking for. Um, and they also uh, afforded us the opportunity to um, increase awareness of both food bank and food insecurity uh, by real estate on the packages. But what does all this mean? Um, so, for the first time, uh, the Food Bank Hunger Report is also going to include social return on investment data. So this is quantifying the value of the food that is distributed to the welfare agencies. Um, and we were, I, I guess not surprised, but we, we were certainly um, very encouraged by, by the response. Um, the work was done by Net Balance and, and audited by uh, Deloitte Access Economics. Um, and, they, and they told us that the social value of the food that had been distributed last year by Food Bank was $571 million, which roughly equates to $23 uh, dollars per kilo. What was interesting to note was in the school breakfast environment, um, that rose to $110 per kilo. So it just shows the importance of making sure that kids are well fed um, and those flow on effects are really apparent in terms of um, increased performance at school, a reduction in, uh, in impact um, on health um, and also a, a reduction on impact on the environment. But um, despite this work um, and despite uh, the work of our partners and the work of other organisations in the sector, um, there's still plenty to be done. We know that uh, currently 60,000 people a month are turned away from food support due to a lack of food or resources. We also know from our research that 65% of agencies don't have enough food. So this is why the work um, of so many of you in this room um, is so important and the work of organisations like Right to Food um, is critical if we're going to start to bridge that gap between supply and demand. Thank you for your time.